so we made our own portable voice assistant to which you can ask any question that you have and it will generate the response based on Gemini AI in real time and all this is working on the single ESP32 module so now let me just show you a couple of cool demos about what this device can do for you who is the CEO of Apple the CEO of Apple is Tim Cook. What is 25 times 350? 25 times 350 is 8750. Translate this into Hindi. Who are you? And furthermore, you can ask any question that you have and this device will generate an answer for you. Isn't that a super amazing IoT project ever? And well now if you are curious enough to know how this works and also to learn how to make it on your own well just keep watching this video till the end because I'll be covering everything about this project. So now let's just start this video with the hardware part of the project. So for making this project we'll need these all components and here the main brain is the ESP32 module. Now previously when I made the chat GPT voice assistant project we used two ESP32 board one for text to speech and other for speech to text but now with the help of the code from Carlo projects github repository we are now able to do it with just a single ESP32 board. So a huge shout out to Carlo projects I'll be leaving away its github repository link down in the description of this video. And later after gathering all the components we need to connect them all according to this schematic diagram. Now here I have properly arranged all the different components based upon their use cases in the schematic starting with the BMS or battery management system and the power supply. So here we have used the TP4056 module as a battery charging module. Later here we have used HT7833 IC as a voltage regulator IC. Previously we used HT7333 but this 7833 got 5 times more output current capacity as compared to the 7333 and due to this we can be sure that our module will get enough current for all the internet connected activities. Later we are also using a booster which converts 3.3 volt to 5 volt which will be later given to the I2S amplifier. Now here the I2S amplifier also works on 3.3 volt but the audio quality is not that louder. With 5 volt we are getting a louder audio quality. So later after booster here we we are using the USB to TTL converter circuit which uses a 3A340C programmer IC along with the Type-C for programming and charging. Here we also use this transistor circuit which will be responsible for automatically uploading the program without pressing the boot button. Here we are using the ESP32 module and here we also provided the reset and the boot button on the board just to be on the safer side. Later we are using a microphone which is an I2S microphone for recording our audio which will be later stored in the SD card. And to provide our recording we are also using a record button so as soon as the button is pressed at that time only the device will be listening other than that the device won't be listening. Later after uh, getting the audio generating the answer it will speak out the answer with the help of the I2S amplifier and with the help of an onboard speaker. Later we also provided an RGB LED which will be uh, acting as a status indicator LED you can say. Then we have a replay button in case we want to listen to that same answer. Once again we can just press the replay button it will replay the audio. Then we also provided a feature of audio jack in which you can insert your uh, headphone or headset and you can listen to all the answers in your earphones. And if you remove that headset the answer will be audible via speaker so we have both the options here last but not the least is the battery level circuit so here we are monitoring the battery level constantly so as soon as the battery level goes below the threshold value the device will speak that battery low please charge something like that okay so that's the complete schematic now we'll be providing this uh, pdf file of the schematic down in the description so you can do check it out and after finalizing the schematic we designed a custom pcb for this project and later gave its order to PCB GoGo. -Go. Now PCB GoGo -Go is one of the largest PCB manufacturer in China and luckily I got a chance to visit their factory last year. It is really huge and they are processing around 3000 orders per day. And ordering PCBs online through PCB GoGo -Go is really very simple. You just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project, select the number of PCBs and color masking and later select the shipping option as per your location. Now here PCB GoGo -Go offers 24 hours PCB manufacturing time without any extra cost if you allow to add the PCB GoGo -Go logo on it which is really convenient for makers like us. And after that your design will be reviewed for any error and later after reviewing you can pay for your order and get it delivered at your doorsteps. 
Now the PCB comes safely in a vacuum packaging and the PCB quality feels really premium. Now currently they are having an amazing offer where you can get $25 worth PCB at just a dollar for all the new users and also they are providing free shipping in North America and Europe. So just click the link mentioned in the description and get your PCBs from PCB Go Go. So later after getting the PCBs, we started soldering the components on it one by one and later after soldering them all, we attached the speaker with the help of nut and bolt and our final project looks like this. Neat and very compact. So that was all about the complete hardware part of the project and now let's move ahead and understand the code for this project. So here explaining the code line by line will be very confusing and you may not be able to understand all the things. So rather explaining the code, let me explain the workflow about how, what are the important things in this complete code and how this is working and how to, uh, you know, in which step we need to require which API key that also I'll let you know in the same video. So this complete code is, this complete project is divided into three segments, STT which is a speech to text. LLM which is large language model and TTS that is text to speech. So first thing is we need to convert our speech to text and we already covered the speech to text in our previous video and we'll be using the deep gram API for converting our speech into text and I have given the proper reason about why we are using the deep gram. The first and foremost is it is really very fast okay. It is chargeable but it is a very very low cost and you can uh, you know, run the free version for maybe years you can say okay so now let me show the steps for getting the deep gram api for that we'll go to this deepgram.com website let's just click on sign up for free here i'll sign up with my google account and as you can see i got a 200 dollar credit already here and let's just click on create api key to generate our api key let's just give the name as stt space techie sms set expiration never i never want to expire my key so after getting this API, you need to copy that and you need to paste it in the third IONO file at this position. So that was the first step using the DeepGram API to convert our speech to text. Once we get the text, that means the question, it will be provided to the LLM and here we are using the Gemini AI. So here we are having two options, either we can go for OpenAI that is ChatGPT or Gemini. Well, OpenAI is not at all free completely, rather Gemini is as of now completely free of course and you can use it for unlimited number of times. There is no restriction as of now, okay, in future we may get it, but as of now it is completely free. That's why we are going for Gemini. I have made a dedicated video as well about how to use Gemini using ESP32 board. So if you just want to understand how we can use this kind of LLM in ESP board, I'll recommend you to watch out that video whose link is in the description. And now for this project, again we need a Gemini API key and to generate the Gemini API key, let me show you the steps. You have to go to Google and just search for Gemini API docs. And here click on the first link then I'll check mark all the boxes and click on continue now click on get API key here I'll create the API key for a new project so after getting that API key you need to paste it in the first INO file at this position so with this we are done with the second step as well which is the large language model and now after getting the question it will be given to the LLM and this will be generating the response for it in a text format and later we need to speak out that answer and for that we need a TTS that is text to speech. So here in the text to speech again we have two options to be used one is the open AI speech to uh, text to speech and th uh, second is the Google text to speech. Uh, now both has some advantages and disadvantages. I'll discuss both of them here. First of all, let's discuss about the Google TTS. So Google TTS advantage is it's completely free of course. It doesn't require any kind of registration or account creation, nothing. You can simply use it straight away. But the negative point here is when we're getting the large answer from the Gemini, the Google TTS sometimes fail to speak out the complete answer. It get resets in between for the shorter answer it works fine but for longer answer it breaks in between so that's a negative point but we tried to solve this out and what we did is we uh, as we get the big answer we are chunking it down into smaller answers and speaking out with the help of google tts but in this again there's one problem we can feel that pause in between the two chunks that's the only issue Otherwise, it can speak out the complete sentence. So that was about the Google TTS. And one more point is the Google TTS voice do sounds like a robotic voice, a computer generated voice. It doesn't sound natural like an AI voice. That all points are covered in the open AI TTS. Its voices is quite natural. We have multiple variety of voices available. It can speak out the complete long answer without any issue. 
But the point is here we need to make an account and this is not completely free of cost. It take very minimal charge of course, but you need to pay for it. It's not completely free. So it totally depends upon you. Uh, if you want to use it in a professional way, you want to pitch to your investor, if you want to show uh, to some really uh, important people, I'll definitely recommend you to go with the open AI. It will be more impressive because voice is very natural and there will be no lag or pause in between. But in case if you are using it as a student for showcasing in your school, colleges or just making it as a hobby project, well, you can go with the Google TTS. It also works great. It can speak out the answer. But as I said, there will be a pause in between. That's the only issue and it is completely free. Of course, I have provided the option for both the, uh, you know, TTS in the code itself. So you can just comment and uncomment out about whichever option you want to use. Now talking about the changes that you need to make in the code, then if you're using the Google TTS, then you don't need to do any changes in the code. But in case if you're using the open AI, first of all, you need to get the open AI key, the same key that we are using in our chat GPT. Okay, I have made a lot of videos about it. You can learn how to get that API key. After getting that API key from OpenAI, just paste it in this first INO file at this position to make it work with the OpenAI. So that was the last step. As soon as you get the answer, it will be converted into speech using the TTS services. And that's how the complete portable voice assistant project is working and the logic for this is embedded in this complete code and here again let me tell you we haven't wrote the complete code rather we took the code from Carlo project as a reference we modified it to make our own portable voice assistant okay so after all this coding part now let me show you how to upload this code into our project so here now before I upload this code onto the board let me tell you some of the necessary and important changes that you need to take care to make this project work on your end as well. So first you need to provide the SRE name and password of your Wi-Fi router through which it will be getting the internet access and as I said uh, OpenAI is an optional thing in case if you want to go dedicatedly for OpenAI TTS then only you need to provide the API key otherwise you can leave it as it is. And to select which TTS service you want to use well that option is provided here so when you select zero it will be Google TTS and when you make it one it will be using the open AI TTS services okay by default it is set to zero because we are using the free Google TTS service now talking about the necessary libraries then here are the three libraries which are being used in this complete uh, code so make sure you have all those library already installed I also provided their uh, respected link so you can download it and install it so yeah those were a couple of uh, changes that you need to do and now we are good to go to upload this code and for that we first need to select the right board and com port so here is the com port and the board will be esp32 dev module later you need to go to tools and here inside the partition scheme you need to select as no ota 2 mb app and 2 mb spiffs that's it now you can directly hit the upload button and if you have all this configuration properly match all the libraries properly installed well the code will successfully upload without any error okay so the code is successfully uploaded and now let us power this up and test it out initially we'll be getting a red green and blue led animation that's a booting animation we can say and now we have to wait till the green led starts blinking rapidly Okay, as you can see the green LED started blinking rapidly which means that it is successfully connected with the network and now we are good to go to ask any questions and to ask the question we need to press and hold this button and the red light will turn on. When the red light is on at that time only the device is listening other than that the device won't be listening. So let us press and test. Who is the CEO of Apple? So when we release the button the data will be sent to the Gemini and we and will be getting the response. Apple as you can see the response was pretty fast okay as compared to the last uh, version well it is really very fast and that too with the help of single ESP32 board only and now here we added a feature of uh, repeat the last answer so uh, the last answer is already stored inside the device and to play it we just need to long press this button Apple is and we can listen to the last answer. Similarly, let's try to ask uh, a little bit lengthier question or longer question. What is the capital of India and China? The capitals of India and China are India, New Delhi, China, Beijing. 
okay so as you can see can listen to the longer questions as well and now let's just ask some longer answer or the descriptive answer let's just see how it performs who is narendra modi Okay, it got reset automatically. Well, sometimes what happens is it is not able to get the proper connectivity and hence we have added an auto reset function. So it is reset completely right now and we need to wait till the green LED blinks rapidly. And now we can ask the question, who is Narendra Modi? Please ask again. Okay, so when the question is not properly recognized, it says please ask again. So let's just try to ask again, who is Narendra Modi? Okay, so as you saw, it was able to speak out the lengthier answer, but the only issue was there were pauses in between. Well, it's just because, uh, as I explained in the in the code explanation part, that in the free TTS, the Google TTS service, uh, it was not able to speak out the lengthier answer. But we tried to rectify that issue, and while rectifying, we landed up on this new issue in which it has some pauses uh, in between two statements or two chunks. We can say that we observed right now. But if we switch it to the open AI TTS, well, there will be no pause in between. But then it is a paid, paid version. So it's totally depend upon you. We have provided both the service option in the code. So you can choose according to your choice. But what I think this Google TTS was also okay. There were not like big pauses in between, very small pause. So I think it's okay. And now one last thing, this device also has a feature of attaching an external headphone. Okay, as you can see, there is a 3.5 mm audio jack. So here we can use this kind of headset or headphones without any microphone. And we can just insert it inside this. And now it will be audible. The answers will be audible inside the headset. So let's just test it out. Now you remember that the microphone will be still utilized of the device itself, not of the headphone. So let's try to ask any question. Who is the CEO of Tesla? Okay, so I was able to hear the answer in the headphone and when the headset is attached, the speaker will be disconnected and when we remove the headset, uh, it will automatically switch back to the speaker and now let me just replay the answer. The CEO of Tesla is Elon Musk. So this time the answer was audible into the speaker. So it's your choice. You can use a headphone to listen privately or you can remove it and let other people listen to the answers. So that was the complete testing of our project. Now, obviously, sometimes it fails to recognize our question and sometimes it even get reset because of lack of network connectivity. But with the help of the audio feedback and auto reset functionalities, this project makes sure that it always ready to listen for your next question. So that was our own made portable voice assistant project. And the good part is we are selling this complete assembled hardware through our website so that you can also try it out on your end so you just need to get the hardware from our website and later you need to upload the code by entering your own credentials like the gemini api your wi-fi name and password your uh, dbgram api etc and later you just need to upload that code into the hardware and you are good to go to play with your own portable voice assistant so that was all about this project and this video now do let me know your thoughts and suggestions regarding this project down in the comments of the video like was this project good or does it need some more improvement well share your thoughts and feedbacks in the comments and let's have a fruitful conversation there and by any chance if i make the version 3 of my voice assistant what kind of features will you expect in that well, you can share that as well in the comments and yeah that being said now i am just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video until then explore learn share with me techie sms